Pick it. McQueenie. Morning. Go ahead and have a seat. We got a few announcements. Uh, happy Father's Day. Hey, Connor, don't go running away now. <laughs> you know, this is my 40th Father's Day, but it's your first. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. If you hadn't heard, Connor, go ahead and make the announcement, Connor. Yeah, so my son was born on Thursday. <laughs> And, and we're looking forward to eventually getting to meet him. Yes. And, oh, yeah, we're going to spoil him and send him home to you. Uh, that, that kid's going to be a, 
you know, a preacher's kid. He's going <laughs> to, so we're looking forward to it. That was congratulations. A uh, few announcements in your bulletin. We'll go over a few of them, some, some changes and stuff that's taking place. Um, the first one you see up there, Evening with the Gaither Music. The Gaithers aren't coming. But the music's going to be here. And if you don't know who the Gaithers are, as Bob said, you were born under a rock. Most of the hymns nowadays that are sung was written by the Gaithers. So you'll be seeing some of these uh, here. And we have a lot of talented people here. It's on June 27th at 5 p.m. So, you know, don't miss it. Don't be square, you know. Be here. Be hip, man. Be hip. So looking forward to it. Um, next on the 4th, not this next Sunday, but the Sunday following, there'll be only one service, worship service, a very patriotic service, and Connor will be preaching. Dale will be on vacation. Uh, if you don't know, he would be here, except for he did something, a little milestone in his life, uh, 50 years being married. Uh, yesterday, there was a celebration here. It was quite a celebration, it too. Was. A lot of people have put a lot of effort into it. If you didn't get to, to be here, you missed a celebration. Uh, and, you know, Maggie did a lot of the legwork, but there was a lot of other people involved. Uh, it was a beautiful time. But Dale's getting to spend some time with his lovely wife and family uh, today. So he asked, you got it covered? I said, yeah, I'll cover it for you. Enjoy your time. So 50 years. Not many people can say They've made it 50 years. So, as I said, I can't believe Donna is still around <laughs> with him after 50 years, but it's wonderful. Uh, VBS donation station in the back, uh, Vacation Bible School. We have uh, a lot of needs. Uh, if you can't be a part of Vacation Bible School, like, as, like a teacher or something, you can provide some of the, the needs we have. Uh, there are little cards back there on a little clips. You can take one off, go and get you some candy, whatever it is, and bring it back to Lauren. Uh, that's what that's back there for. And we're looking forward to a great vacation Bible school coming up here in July. Uh, this Wednesday, the student ministry will meet at Starkey Park East Pavilion, Pavilion P11 at 5.30. It uh, looks like they're going to have a good time. It says they're going to grill out, have devotion, and hang out together. So it looks like a good time at Starkey Park. Uh, any AT and, uh, want a T and T children uh, like to ride in the parade, the Fourth of July picnic uh, uh, parade uh, in Seguin, one of the best in the nation. Uh, get with Lauren if you want to ride on the float. Uh, that's going to be for the AT and. I want a TNT. A, yeah, a TNT. Uh, so the TNT children uh, for the parade. So, any other announcements? Uh, since I was away for two weeks, I don't know. Did you mention that everybody needs to bring a side dish and a dessert next Sunday? No, I didn't. Hmm? No. No, I didn't mention that. So you do that because otherwise all you're going to have to eat is Robert's meat. <laughs> well, if Robert's cooking, it's going to be good enough, Robert, right? So, but yeah, bring a side dish. And, and both. Okay, so we're looking forward to having that next. There's a dinner in right after the, the Gaithers. All right, anything else? All right, let's go ahead and have a word of prayer before we continue on. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, this Father's Day, uh, that we can celebrate those who has a big influence in our lives. We ask you to bless us uh, in this time of worship. Let our worship please you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please stand. Alone in my sorrow and dead in my sin. Lost without hope with no place to begin. Your love made a way to let mercy come in. When death was arrested and my life began, ash was redeemed, only beauty remains. My orphan heart was given a name. My morning 
were quiet, my feet rose to dance. When death was arrested, my life began. Oh, your grace so free washes Chains, I'm a prisoner no more. My shame was a ransom he faithfully bore. He canceled my debt and he called me his friend. When death was arrested in my Our Savior displayed on a criminal's cross. Darkness rejoiced as though heaven had lost. But then Jesus arose with our freedom in hand. That's when death was arrested and my life began. Father, we just pray right now, Lord, we come and we, Lord, we just fix our eyes on you, God. And Lord, we look to you to help us to just navigate this life with all of its ups and all of its downs, Lord, and all of its changes and winding roads. God, we look to you. And Lord, we ask right now that you would make us moldable, God, that you would make us flexible, Lord, so that we can receive your Holy Spirit that just cannot be boxed in, God. Lord, help us to be free. Lord, so that you can do new and powerful works in our lives. Lord, as we sing this song, Lord, we commit our lives to you and we ask that your Holy Spirit would work in our lives in ways, Lord, that we couldn't imagine, God. 
Lord, we pray this and we ask this as we worship you. In the crushing and in the pressing, you are making new wine. In the sore light, now surrender. When I trust you, I don't need to understand. So make me a vessel, make me an offering, make me whatever you want me to be. I came here with nothing but all. Me, Jesus, bring new wine out of me. In the crushing, in the pressing, you are making new wine. Thank you for this time to worship you, God, just to come into your presence, Lord, and just to be able to sing your praises, Lord. We are so grateful and we are so thankful to praise your glorious and wonderful name this morning, God. Lord, we pray that your holy presence would continue to be in this place, Lord. We ask for your Holy Spirit to speak to our hearts. Lord, as we open up your word, God, we pray for Clifton as he comes. Lord, we pray that you would just speak through him. Lord, just give him your power and your spirit to preach your word, God. Lord, and as he speaks, Lord, we pray that it would just, um, just drop down deep into our hearts and begin to work and begin to change us. Lord, we're listening to you this morning, and we wait in anticipation to hear what you have to tell us. 
Lord, we ask all of these things in your holy, most precious name. Amen. Well, good morning, McQueenie, and all of you that are watching online. Stephanie, you're probably there. Good morning. Uh, happy Father's Day, as we said earlier. And it's also the first day of summer. And some of you are probably thinking summer's been around already a few weeks. But it's the first day of summer officially. Uh, we look like we're going to have a nice, warm summer coming up. And so hopefully uh, today, being Father's Day, that you fathers uh, get to be able to relax and have, you know, people waiting on you. Nah, it won't happen. But anyway, it's being Father's Day. So today being Father's Day, there's, there's a father we're going to look at that is unique. Uh, you've probably heard this parable of the prodigal son, but we're going to look at it in several different ways. We're going to have three different ways we're going to look at it. And there's also a new revelation that is given me while I was preparing it that some of you are going to find very interesting. Uh, we'll cover that closer to the end. But before we get started on our, our main uh, verses today, we need to know who was Jesus talking to in these verses. Uh, in Luke chapter 15, starting in verse 1, it says, Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathered around to hear him. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, this man welcomes sinners with them. Now, I see this kind of unusual, the way Luke starts this here. Now, the tax collectors and sinners. You know, most of the time in that culture, tax collectors were sinners. They would rob people, take their money, uh, make them pay more taxes so they could line their own pockets. But here Luke is saying that tax collectors and sinners were gathered around them. Now the religious leaders were listening to what Jesus had to say. So Jesus in Luke 15 gives us three parables. The first one was the lost sheep that the shepherd would go out to get the one and leave the 99 behind because he cared so much for his sheep that he would go out and get that lost one. He also did the parable of the lost coin that there's rejoicing when the lost coin is found, especially when you have none and you find that one. There's rejoicing, rejoicing in heaven as well. And we're going to be looking at the parable of the lost son. Now, this first slide that I had up here said lost son in parentheses, sons. And you're going to see why there's more than just one lost son that we're going to be dealing with. So we're going to look at chapter, Luke chapter 15, and I'll read all the scripture for you if you don't have your Bible. I want to apologize for the small print up there. Uh, on my monitor at home, it was big, <laughs> but here it's pretty small. But now you know what it feels like for me trying to read this as well. Somebody made this small as well. It used to be big, but now it's small. So now you all have to uh, squint to be able to see it if you want to see it. But if you have your Bibles, Luke chapter 15, starting in verse 11. Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything there with, was a severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out 
to a citizen of that country who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired men have food to spare, and here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired men. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and a celebration. For the son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard the music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on. Your brother has come, he replied, and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, Look, all these years I've been slaving for you, and never disobeyed your orders. Yet you never gave me a young goat so that you could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours who has squandered your property with prostitutes come home, you kill the fattened calf for him. My son, the father said, you're always with me, and everything I have is yours. But we have to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Let's go to prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning on this Father's Day, Lord, to open our eyes to your wisdom, to your words, that each and every person here can be touched by what you have told us in this parable. Let us find ourselves in this parable to give us guidance, to give us a future with you in heaven. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. The prodigal son, and as I said earlier, the first slide said sons. So we're going to look at the scripture and see what, if we can find that little treasure, as I always told my Sunday school class, in God's word, there's always hidden a little treasure, a little something that he wants to speak to you about, something just for you, and it can open your eyes to so many things. So let's look, starting in verse 11. There was a man who had two sons. <laughs> I have two sons. And this man was fairly wealthy. He had servants. He had hired help. He had looked like a pretty comfortable uh, existence. No doubt he had worked hard for what he had, and he had two sons uh, that were with him at this time. And then the younger one, that's Will, you Will, <laughs> the younger one said to his father, give me my share of this state. Now, Will knows pretty well, if he came to me with that request, what kind of response he would get. <laughs> it's not something I can say in church. <laughs> You're going to have to wait till I'm dead and cold on the ground before you get it. <laughs> but this father is not an ordinary father. And we're going to discover here in a few minutes who this father is, what the parable is all about. And so this father says to his son, so he divided his property between him. 
Now, the younger son would get about a third of his estate. Now, we don't know what he, he gave his son. It doesn't tell us. Jesus in the parable didn't say. But a lot of times, as we see with Abraham, he had a lot of property, a lot of livestock, sheep, goats, and things like that. A lot of servants, they were considered, uh, some of the uh, slaves were considered property. So we don't know what he had, but he had to sell or give away, whatever you want to call it, to get some money out of the deal. Giving away wouldn't do it, but selling it to get a third of it to give to his son. Now, most people listening to Jesus' parable at this time probably would have been shocked to hear a son coming and asking his father for his share. In other words, it's the same thing as saying, Dad, I wish you were dead so I can get my estate. But this father doesn't react that way. This father, very loving father, said, okay, let's divide this state. We'll divide the property. So let's look at the younger son, what he does. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had and set off for a dis distant country. Now, let me explain to you what a distant country could mean. Uh, there are some of you right now that are in a distant country in your mind. You may be thinking about, what am I going to do once this guy gets through preaching to me? I'm going to go home and barbecue a steak. Now, that's what I'm thinking about, a steak, you know. You're not listening to what God has for you today. So you're off in a foreign country. There are people within our community, in our lives that are off in foreign countries that they no longer have fellowship within a church. They have may been saved. They accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior, but have wandered away to a foreign country. They're no longer in the fold. So we see this young man just holding on to his money for a little while, and decides, well, I'm going to go out and make it on my own. So let's see what happens to the younger son. And there he squandered his wealth in wild living. We can probably see, and we probably know people that are sinners that have gone and spent way too much. It's easy to see nowadays, especially uh, during this time that we're living in, uh, during the COVID pandemic, there's a lot of people struggling right now. There are people struggling to, to make rent. There are people struggling to feed their children. And some of them probably weren't prepared for that. They have, may have gone out thinking, you know, things are going great. I'm going to take a risk. Didn't pray about it. I'm going to go out and do my own thing. And all of a sudden, now they don't have a job. And so they are no different than what we're seeing here. This young man, though, did it on his own. Went on his wild living spree. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in the whole country. And he began to be in need. See, we don't know what the future holds for us. This young man didn't know what the future held for him. He probably had a lot of friends when he first got there. With all the money, there was a lot of friends. But now he finds out those weren't real friends. And now he began to be in need. Now, I have to hold this, this young man up a little bit because he had enough sense, probably from his father, from his raisings that he decided he must do something. He's in a bad way, but he just didn't lay there and say, oh, woe is me. Let's see what the young man did. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to the fields to feed pigs. 
Now, he's hired. That means he's going to be receiving a wage. So he's going down the right path. But in the Jewish culture, pigs was not something to be happy about. They considered pigs to be the lowest animal on this earth. I was raised near a pig farm. Uh, I had a mile long driveway that I had to walk every day to go to catch a bus. You know, like they say, uphill both ways in the snow. But we had to go catch a bus. And I can tell you, a pig form doesn't smell real well. Oftentimes, the wind was out of the right direction I was walking by. I had to hold my breath to get by. One thing that my wife discovered, because watching the Discovery Channel, you learn a lot of things. Pigs like listening to radios, by the way. I'm just going to step off the side <laughs> path here for a minute. They are more relaxed listening to radios. And I told told Penny, I, said, I knew that. I was by pig form, raised by pig form. They have radio playing all the time, so the pigs will be relaxed. That's beside the point. But anyway, pigs can be filthy. Now, this young man was working around the pigs, feeding the pigs. And I can tell you, by walking by this pig form, there was no place that you could walk in there to feed the pigs that you didn't get a little on you. And this young man... Being in a hard way, I imagine his clothes became filthy, tattered, and torn, and probably smelled like the pigs that he was feeding. It wasn't a pretty sight. So let's see what goes on. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. Those so-called friends he had we're nowhere to be found. So he's in a bad way. When he came to his senses, I like that. When he came to his senses. Now, they are people that we know, I'm sure you know, I know, that sometimes have to hit the bottom in life. You can teach to them, preach to them, beg to them. They're not going to hear you they're going to have to hit bottom. I've always said, those people, if they turn around and look up, there's a hand reaching for them. But they have to hit bottom, rock bottom, before they ever turn around and look up. That Jesus is there to pull them out of those difficult times. But they have to do it their own way. And this young man has hit rock bottom. And he's come to his senses. So he makes a plan. How many of my father's hired men have food to spare? And here I am, starving to death, exclamation point. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired men. So he got up and went to his father. The other thing I can say about this young man is he realized what he had done wrong, what it cost him. So thinking about it, he planned to repent to his father. And his thought was, I'm going back to my father and I can become a slave or a hired hand and live better than I'm living now. So I'm going to go back to my father and see if my father will accept me back. You know, nowadays with a lot of broken homes, I have known a lot of families. My brother always claimed he was a black sheep of the family. Um, that if he saw that individual coming, a lot of fathers even have given money to help these families out, this son or daughter out. And the first thing that come to their mind is what do they want now? This father, as I mentioned, is a lot different. We're going to see how this father reacts to see that son 
walking up the driveway. But while he was still a long way off, down that roadways, his father saw him and filled with compassion for him, he ran to his son and threw his arms around him and kissed him. As I mentioned earlier, he probably didn't smell too well. He probably lost weight, and he didn't look very well. All that aside, the father didn't care. The father loved his son, and he ran to him. Now, in that culture, the fathers, especially of esteemed positions, they didn't run. It's like me. I don't run much anymore. That's because I can't. The knees won't allow it. But this father loved his son, pulled up his robe, didn't care what anybody thought, and ran out there to meet his son who was coming up the road from afar. And he hugged and he kissed him. Now, one of the things you may not know, one of the reasons the older one, the older son, got a larger lion's share of the inheritance was because once the father is gone, I haven't had an older brother who just recently passed away. He used to kid me about this. When my father passed away, he said, now I'm in charge. I'm the oldest brother, and you're going to do what I say. Those of you who know me know how I reacted to that. <laughs> yeah, right. That ain't going to happen. But part of the responsibility of the oldest son was to take care of the father's business or the family once the father passed away. That's one reason why they got a larger share. His brother should have been concerned about the younger son. In fact, if the older brother saw the younger son before the father, he probably would have told him, what are you doing here? You coming for more money? That's where his heart was. So let's see what takes place. The son said to his father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Well, that's what he had planned. But the father said to his servant, quick, exclamation point, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and found. So let's then begin to celebrate. Now there's a significance there. The father is restoring his son back to where he was before. The signet ring meant that he had authority to speak for his father. If there was something that needed to be done, he could use a signet ring, and it was just as good as his father said it. The sandals on his feet, he's no longer a slave. He is elevated in status. And the robe meant that he belonged to that family. And so he fully restored his son who had gone out and squandered everything. Now the oldest son, everything his father had now was his. And so his father is taking things from his brother because now his brother is back. He's restoring him to his position. So let's see how the older brother reacts. Meanwhile, the older, bro older son was in the field, slaving away, poor guy. When he came near the house, he heard the music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on. Your brother has come, he replied, and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has them back safe and sound. So he's not real happy about this. In fact, we see the older brother became angry and refused to go in. 
So his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, Look, all these years I've been slaving, not working for you or being with you, Father. I've been slaving away and getting nothing in return. We can see where his heart is. He cares about things. His younger brother was no different. He cared about things. And that's why I'm saying they're missing the point. This younger son, this is probably one of the most important times in his father's life by seeing his son return home and the older son could care less. He's looking inward to himself and concerned about things. You never even gave me a goat to celebrate with my friends. Well, son, everything I have is yours. You wanted a goat, you could have it. But you're here with me all the time. My son, the father said, you're always with me and everything I have is yours. But we have to celebrate and be glad because your brother of yours was dead and is alive again and was lost and now is found. Now here's a new perspective that I when was preparing for the sermon that was revealed to me. It's different than most sermons you've heard. We have an older brother. As Christians, his name is Jesus Christ. Our brother is different than this older brother. Our brother calls himself the good shepherd. He goes out and gets that one and leaves 99 behind. Our brother who has given, was given by his father everything, chose to die for us on the cross to give us everything to be restored in full. We have the signet ring that we have the authority to preach the gospel. We have sandals on our feet. We're no longer slaves to sin. And we wear the robe, the righteous robe of God that we can spend eternity in heaven with our family of believers. We owe a lot to this parable. And we must realize what Jesus is telling us through this parable. We can often get caught up on things. We can often get caught up on what's the other one getting and not me. When truly what's important might be right before us. Jesus Christ and what he's done for us by dying on the cross. There's three things I want you to take away today from this parable. The first thing is that God seeks us. He's seeking you right now. If you're lost, he will leave the 99, 99 billion or whatever. He will come looking for you. He says, seek and you shall find me. He died while we were yet sinners. And he will come for you. There are a lot of people that have heard God's word and come up with excuses. One day, 
one day, maybe next weekend, you know, maybe next summer, or maybe when I make enough money, I can accept Christ as my Lord and Savior. One thing this pandemic has shown us, we're not guaranteed tomorrow. We need to make that decision now. Tuesday morning prayer breakfast, we pray for the lost. We have a long list of lost people that we know personally, and we pray for those people to be found. We also have a list of the backslidden, people that we know have accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior, but for whatever reason, they don't attend church anymore. They have nothing to do with fellowship with Christ. And we pray for each one of those individuals because they're no different than the son going out and living in a foreign country. And we long for those days when they can rejoice being back with the Father. Number two, repent. When the younger son was at his lowest, he realized what he had done wrong. And he repented to the Father. God wants us to realize where we would be without his son in our lives. We need to repent from the sin and turn away from that and come to the Father. And he will meet us with open arms and with a kiss. Doesn't matter what you've done, what you said, what you've gone through. It doesn't matter. He doesn't care. But he wants you to come back to the family and repent. The most important thing we need to realize what it cost for us to get back to the family of God. God sent his one and only son, the eldest to come and die for you, to have a seat at the table, the most precious thing he has. And we need to realize how lucky, how blessed that we have an opportunity to be a part of God's kingdom through what Jesus done for us long before we were ever born. The forgiveness of our sins is something not to be taken lightly. This parable is very powerful. This parable tells us what our Father in heaven is like. Jesus gave us a little glimpse through this parable on what God is like. He's merciful where most fathers would not be. He's understanding and his love outweighs anything that we have done. So this Father's Day, remember the Father in heaven and how much he loves each and every one of us. And remember Jesus Christ and what he did for us to be able to have a seat at the table. I'm going to ask uh, Evie and come up and lead us in our final worship. The altar's up here if you'd like to come up and, and pray. That's what we're here for. If you'd like someone to pray with you, i got a mask on, I'll pray with you. Uh, but please stand as we close this time.
Thank you for coming today. I hope you have a wonderful Father's Day. And it's one that you will always remember and cherish. Let's go ahead and I'm going to ask Ken Marquis to close us with a word of prayer. Father God, once again, we thank you for this message this morning. I just pray for the lost souls around us, Lord. I just pray that we be brave enough and bold enough 